Now, the book was delivered the other day through a friend who went to Cuba and brought it back directly. So this was a very special gift and it's even more special because it's, a, it's an, an edition of a Soviet story book that was translated to Spanish, in, uh, to Cuban Spanish around, I'm not sure when, so I'm gonna check that right now. Uh, oh, 1973. It's a really old book, as you can see by the, some of the tear. The deter I mean, honestly, I think it's in really good conditions, uh, bearing in mind how old it is and the fact that most Cuban homes don't have air conditioning, so there's, things are susceptible to really getting deteriorated through all the humidity. But this was a really special thing that I wanted to have in my hands, in my possession. You know, we're possessive creatures, all right? Uh, because I faintly remember looking through an illustrated book, a storybook, because it's just illustrations and it's got very, not, the, not all that much text, but there are stories, uh, really heartwarming, uh, community-oriented stories about helping the animals of the forest and other sweet things like that and it's a Soviet book so it's it's its goal was to tr try and create a sense of community a sense of belonging trying to get children to develop the the principles that were necessary to try and sustain together um, such a ambitious goal and putting politics aside it was just really special to me because like I said I faintly remember while I was a kid growing up in Cuba it was just one really blurry image of me opening up a book about specifically the story about all these these animals that collect in underneath the mushroom and so they're all seeking refuge and they think that nobody's gonna fit that it's just there just isn't enough space for them but then as the rain deepens it, the, the mushroom just keeps expanding and there's more and more it's like teaching you a simple morale collectivist morale of telling you that it may seem that there isn't enough but it's possible that we can all benefit from an expanding mushroom <laughs> but um the thing um that's uh, really cute about this whole um situation of having soviet folklore basically translated to spanish um, it traveled. The, the, this is the author. It traveled to the Caribbean because there was, you know, the, the Soviet expansion. But because of a, a political incident that the Soviet found themselves in Cuba, there's a there are entire generations of Cubans that have this uh, this nostalgia for all things Soviet. I mean, I heard that there's even a store down here in Miami where they sell canned food and all sorts of memorabilia, all sorts of things are uh, Soviet themed, not precisely even Russian per se, like, but um, it's, it's great when I think about all the different influences that I've had you know, as a childhood thing. I think it's, uh, it's rather interesting and it makes for a, a unique childhood uh, nevertheless. Um, and I'm really thankful for my friend for sending me this uh, edition because he was I told him that it's a book that I had wanted to see and because my mother has told me about it and he was just one day strolling by through Havana and saw it in a store and then he bought it and um, here it is. And I'm pretty sure a lot of Cubans are going to want to get their hands on this as well <laughs> because it's a very coveted story.